Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I hope all of you are doing well. Congrats to everyone there for their promotion to the next class. I am your science teacher here with your new science book. This is Oxford Secondary Science Level 1 by Terry Jennings. I hope all of you have bought your books. First, I will show you your course content for the midterm. This is your course content. It is divided into three sections, Biology, Chemistry and Physics. Biology section includes two chapters, chapter number one, cells, tissues and organs, chapter number three, photosynthesis and respiration in plants. Chemistry section includes chapter number five, atoms, molecules, mixture and compounds. Physics section also includes one chapter and that is chapter number nine, forces and machines. Mark all these chapters in your book that are given in the course content. Now we'll start chapter number one, cells, tissues and organs. Dear students, this chapter belongs to the branch of science that is called biology. Do you know what is biology? The word biology is derived from two words. Bio means life and logy means to study. So biology is that branch of science which deals with the living things that are animals and plants. In this chapter, I will teach you about the concepts relating to plants and animals. Dear students, as you know that all living things are made up of cells. What are cells? Cells are the building blocks of life. They are not only the structural but functional units of life also. It means that all living things are made up of cells. If there are no cells, there will be no life and hence no animals, no plants. Dear students, we cannot see a cell with our naked eyes. For this, we are going to use an electron microscope. Right now, I cannot show you any by means of the microscope, but you, can, you will be able to see a cell by means of a model. This is the model of a typical animal cell. It has the following parts. This outer boundary is known as the cell membrane. Inside the cell membrane, there is cytoplasm, all this substance, the greenish one, this is called cytoplasm. In the middle of the cytoplasm, there is a nucleus. These small bag-like structures, they are called the vacuoles. This one is known as the mitochondria. This is the model of a plant cell. The outer covering of the plant cell is called cell wall. Inside the cell wall you have the cell membrane. This yellowish portion is called the cytoplasm. This one big organelle or part is called the vacuole. This red one is known as the nucleus. The green ones are known as the chloroplast and these small red one they are called the mitochondria. Now you have learned that both plants and animals have cells. Although they are different but they have some parts or features in common. Let's discuss those parts along with their functions one by one. Common features of both plant and animal cell. Number one, cell membrane. It is the outer membranous covering of the cell. It gives shape to the cell. It allows material to go in and out of the cell. Do you know what materials go in and out of the cell? Obviously, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, food, waste materials, etc. Cytoplasm. Inside the cell membrane, there is a jelly-like substance that is called the cytoplasm. All the organelles are suspended in cytoplasm. What are organelles? The smaller parts of the cell are called the organelles. In the middle of the cell, there is a nucleus. Nucleus is known as the control center of the cell. Why? Because it controls all the processes that are taking place inside the cell. They help in the cell division. Dear students, have you ever heard the word DNA? 
DNA means deoxyribonucleic acid. It is responsible for carrying the hereditary material from the parents to the offsprings. This DNA is present in the nucleus of the cell. Now, mitochondria. What are mitochondria? They are also the smaller parts of the cell. They are known as the powerhouse of the cell. Why? Because cellular respiration, that is intake of oxygen and giving out of carbon dioxide and combi combination of oxygen with the food to release energy, it takes place through the mitochondria. Ribosome is another organelle that is present in the plant and animal cell and it helps in the making of proteins. Then we have the vacuole. Vacuole is a bag-like structure or you can call it a bubble-like structure which is also a storehouse for the cell. Why a storehouse? Because it stores different materials in it. For example, water, food, waste materials, etc. Now I am going to discuss two other features which are only present in the plant cell. Cell wall. Cell wall is the outer covering of the plant cell. It is absent in the animal cell. It is made up of a tough material that is called the cellulose. And due to the presence of cellulose, it provides rigidity. Rigidity means strength, hardness to the cell. Then we have another characteristic organelle and that is the chloroplast, which is only present in the plant cell. What is chloroplast? Chloroplast is a disc-shaped organelle. It contains a green pigment that is called chlorophyll. What does chlorophyll do? Chlorophyll helps in the trapping of sunlight energy for the process of photosynthesis. Do you remember the process of photosynthesis? The process by which plants make their own food in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll from carbon dioxide and water. Now I am going to teach you all the parts of the cell along with their function with the help of a diagram. This is the diagram of an animal cell. Its outer covering is known as the cell membrane. Inside the cell membrane there is a jelly like substance, this empty space which you are seeing. This is known as the cytoplasm. All the organelles means all the parts of the cell are suspended in the cytoplasm. Then in the middle of the animal cell we have the nucleus which is the control center of the cell which controls all the activities of the cell which helps in the uh, cell division and it also contains DNA which helps in the carrying of hereditary materials from the parents to the offspring. Then we have small um, bag-like structures or bubble-like structure which are called the vacuoles. Many vacuoles are present in the animal cell which stores food, water etc. Then we have the this organelle which is called the mitochondrion or mitochondria which are known as the powerhouse of the cell because energy is released in these organelles. Now this is the typical diagram of a plant cell. Outer covering is known as the cell wall. Cell wall is absent in the animal cell. Cell wall is made up of a tough material that is called the cellulose. Then inside the cell wall we have the cell membrane. This is the cell membrane. Inside the cell membrane we have a jelly like substance that is called the cytoplasm. All the organelles or the smaller parts of the cell are suspended in this cytoplasm. One big vacuole, one large vacuole is present in the plant cell which contains the solution of salt, water, sugar etc. And this is called the cell sap. What is cell sap? Cell sap is the solution of sugar and salts etc. Right? Then we have the organ that is called mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. And then we have one important organ that is called the chloroplast which contains green pigment which helps in the process of photosynthesis. I hope you have uh, distinguished the animal cell from the plant cell. You have noticed that some of the organelles are present in both the plant and animal cell and some of them are only present in the 
plant cell but they are absent in the animal cell these differences and similarities will be discussed again with the help of a venn diagram dear students whenever we want to show similarities and differences between two things we do it by means of a venn diagram these two sides shows the differences between the plants and animals and this portion shows the similarities between the animal and plant cell how is an animal cell different from the plant cell it has no cell wall it has no chloroplast it has many small vacuoles nucleus is present in the center of the cell right nucleus is present in the center of the cell while the animal cell they are found in different shapes for example some of the shapes are oval rectangular square irregular etc etc how is a plant cell different from an animal it contains cell wall it contains chloroplast it contains one large central vacuole right nucleus is pushed at one side of the cell and it is usually found in rectangular shape it means it has a definite shape the similarities between an animal and plant cells are both animal and plant cells have nucleus they have mitochondria they have a cell membrane both of them have a cytoplasm ribosomes etc are present in both plant and animal cells now i'll show you this differences between plant and animal cell with the help of a diagram the outer covering of the animal cell is called cell membrane the outer covering of the plant cell is called cell wall cell membrane lies inside the cell wall nucleus lies in the center of the animal cell nucleus lie at the side of the plant cell many small vacuoles are present in the animal cell one large vacuole is present in the plant cell chloroplast are present in the plant cell chloroplast are absent in the animal cell animal cells are found in different shapes plant cells are usually rectangular this was all for today i hope you have understood basic concepts regarding plant and animal cell read page 2 and 3 underline important concepts and read them again and again and keep all these concepts in your mind see you again until then allah hafiz